one of the things I've been asked a lot about is how am I going about publicizing the, uh, the radio classes? And actually, as my role uh, of affiliated club coordinator for Easton, Massachusetts, I actually had a Zoom session with uh, uh, other affiliated clubs to talk about running license classes. And one of the questions was, well, how do you go about doing this? Now, the club, uh, the PIO um, uh, responsibility has kind of been shared. I know George does a little bit of the PIO, um, public information officer, and I've done a fair amount of the, and I've done the PIO for this, uh, for this um, class uh, uh, activity. Um, one of the things that I do professionally, I'm in, I've always been in sales and marketing, or at least have been for the last 40 years. And over the last 20 or so years, uh, building a, an, a database and maintaining a database of things like contacts and people you reach out to is really important. So I thought I would, I would do this for um, the club activities that I was working on, so I got started. So <clears throat> the real problem is you have something like a license class. Um, who do you who do you promote this to? Who do you contact? Who do you let know that a class is coming up? And so I just sat down one day and brainstormed. Um, obviously, the club reflector and the email list is a popular place. All of our club members and all the people we have on the email list can basically make the people that they know aware of the class. I've had a number of people who are taking the class that are either uh, sisters, brothers, that kind of thing of existing hams. So they put the word out. Um, we've got a Facebook presence. We posted a notice on there. The response there, and George, you'll be interested in this. The response there was also particularly interesting. It certainly was. It certainly was. Normally, um, posts there get about, oh, somewhere between 10 and 30 um, views. The post you put up there for your class got over 1,100 views. So, so it, it, it's interesting, and I'll, I'll kind of show, show some of this later. And also, I'd be interested to know how you got that statistic, George, because I didn't find it. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if you, did you promote, quote, promote the page? I don't think I did. Just something happened. Um, well, uh, but I also posted it not just on our YouTube page, so I'll show you that too. Um, ARL has a page called Find a Class, so it was posted there. Um, if I don't know how many of you are fam familiar with Nextdoor, uh, but on nextdoor.com, we promoted the class. And I sent notices to local newspapers. I was actually kind of disappointed with the with the local newspaper response, but nevertheless, uh, I made the effort. Now you'll see the things underneath that I have uh, um, in. Uh, I've gone brain dead now in uh, the slightly different font. Italics. Um, in italics, I have not notified public safety officials. I have not notified local educators, and I have not notified the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, but I found an awful lot of information online. So um, I'll show you a little bit about, about what's available there. And when we have future classes or future activities, these are all places where we can start. Particularly the Boy Scouts is a good place to, if you're gonna do a, a youth program, it's a good place to really start and to really focus. And you would actually be shocked at the number of Boy Scout troops within a 10 mile, the 10 mile radius of Pepperell. Uh, it's actually pretty astounding. All right, so what's the solution? Well, you post, uh, post announcements, you gather information group by group. The information, the contacts, the email addresses, the phone numbers, that all has to be captured and put into some kind of database so that you can use this effectively in the future. The current um, industry lingo is a CRM, which stands for Customer Relationship Management. I'm a little bit older. I just think of a contact manager like an electronic Rolodex, essentially. 
and you build this data for future use. In other words, this is not a one and done kind of thing. No database maintains itself. You have to work at it and you continually get better at it. So I've got a place to start. And again, just like the database I have for sending out my monthly email addresses to hams in the area, this will be a database for us to send notices and make people aware of things going on. And you can slice it and dice it and do all of those things. So if you have an announcement that you wanna get general press coverage on, that can go to one group of people. If you want an announcement that you wanna to go to uh, that it's geared towards youth, developing youth in amateur radio, that can go to a different group of people. So there's a lot of ways you can manipulate the data. For example, the ARL Eastern Mass website, um, Phil Temples, somehow, somewhere, picked up on the announcement. And so if you go to the website, you'll see that anybody from Eastern Massachusetts that peruses the ARL website, it's fairly prominent. It's on the front page, although it was prominent when we announced it. It's kind of scrolled down a little bit now. But nevertheless, you'll see the notice of the, um, of the Neshoba Valley Amateur Radio Club uh, classes on the um, Eastern Mass webpage. Let's hope this works. It does. Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. So Facebook number one is the Neshoba Valley Amateur Radio Club. And let me see if I can hide these thumbnails. The Neshoba Valley Amateur Radio Club Facebook page. Um, and if you scroll down, and again, this is because, hang on a second. If we scroll down a little bit, you see um, that this meeting has been announced, but you'll also see the notice right underneath it talks about, uh, talks about the classes. And uh, you'll see over here, nine shares. This means that nine Facebook members took this and shared it with somebody else. They could have shared it with their Facebook friends. They could have shared it on their own particular Facebook page. I think, George, that may be where you got that statistic that you had. Um, actually, if you log in as, um, as your administrative self, you can see the statistics under each uh, post that people do. OK, I'll have a look at that in a second. This is something new that's just started happening. I think it's because uh, we've gotten enough likes, and so now Facebook loves us. So you'll notice down here that um, somebody replied here, and I have no idea who this person is, says, is there any chance a course like this will be offered online? And so I was able to send him to the ARL website, um, and he can pursue uh, his interest in amateur radio in an online in an online class. Um, George, I'm going to go back here and log on, and maybe you can walk me through where it talks about. <laughs> no, bots don't work on on. Facebook. This has to do. Here is the right here, George. The eleven hundred and twenty-one reached. That's it. I don't know what thirty-seven engagement means, but I have not. If you hit this boost post, they want money from you. That's right. And I'm not there yet, so I, I clicked I'm, on this. Yeah, I'll bet you posting on the Eastern Massachusetts site got people curious. Could be. Could be a lot of different things. Um, but I'll show you another place. So um, if I go back to my PowerPoint and I click the second one, I joined a group called Massachusetts Prepping. And while I have zero interest in Massachusetts Prepping, I thought this might be an interesting place to troll for people who might be interested in learning more about amateur radio. And again, uh, lo and behold, 
somewhere down here. Here we go. Here is the um, here is the notice in this group seen by 89, which isn't bad. Eight thumbs up, which isn't bad. And one comment. Man, I wish this was closer. I paid for course online a year ago and never got it. And again, I sent him to the ARRL class. And I think he replied with a, with a thank you or I replied with a thumbs up. So again, just another way to get the word out, right? And if we get better at this and know, find out about more local groups that might be interested, uh, perhaps we'll get uh, perhaps we'll get some more interest. So going back here, the next one is next door. So I think of next door as being like Facebook for your town or surrounding communities. So um, I posted on next door exactly the same uh, um, message, and I did get some. Oh, that's why I did get some response out of this uh, somewhere else, by the way, I posted in two different places. There was uh, another person who posted that he failed his amateur radio test and uh, I responded, hey, here's a license class you can take kind of thing. This post went to 27 local neighborhoods, so I don't know if you can see the map. We'll zoom in a little bit, but when I said that uh, next door is like Facebook for your local communities, these are the local communities that my post goes to. Now you'll notice this is Harvard, this is Groton, so it's Har Harvard centric. So you have to know people in other communities. Well, it turns out that uh, Jim, AB1WQ, lives here in Pepperell. And his notice, Harvard, it was Hollis, Brookline, Townsend, Dunstable, Pepperell, and I think Groton also, uh, for his notice. So he covered this geographical region. My daughter lives in Lunenburg, so her post goes, goes basically, you know, from Lunenburg to the communities around. So, you know, Townsend, Ashby, Fitch, uh, Fitchburg, Lemonster, uh, they all got the notice, okay? So if you pay attention and you read the notice, then um, it's good publicity. So, um, and again, there's been some action. There's at least been some chatter. Um, Jim, did somebody reach, talk to you who saw it? Did yeah, if you can hear me. Um, yeah, there was somebody who contacted me from Dunstable east of Pepperell and said that uh, when his father had some feedback. Go ahead. I, 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 I muted mine. Okay. He said his father had been a radio operator in World War II on B-17s and B-29s. And he had tried to get him uh, to, uh, to get his license, never really succeeded in that. But um, his, his father did have a leg up because he said he could still uh, all those years after the war, copy CW in his sleep, which is quite a skill. Um, by the way, if anyone has any questions, hang on a second. I was, if, if anyone has any questions, feel free to stop me, okay? Moving on. Uh, hang on a second, moving on. So ARRL has a page, find an amateur radio class in your area. Let's see if this one works. It does. So basically um, you go to this page where you can search. And if we do an ARRL section on Eastern Massachusetts and hit search, da -da 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 -da, here it is, okay. So if somebody is on the ARRL webpage and decides that they're interested in an amateur radio class, uh, they can follow up from this. And, uh, and again, the learn more, I think gives like all, all of the details, where it is, when it is, uh, all of those kinds of things. 
Um, um, I did the research on newspapers. I went town by town and did a search on newspapers by each town. So for instance, you know, when I did the search in Pepperell, the Groton Herald, the Towns and Times showed up, but I also did searches in those particular towns, right? Um, the idea being, if you go to each of these pages, they either have a contact or an email address at the newspaper where you send your press releases, or they have an online form that you have to fill out and, and basically copy and paste your press release. So I did this for about a half a dozen pages. Uh, I was somewhat disappointed uh, in the results, um, although, you know, if, uh, if you go to this page, this is um, for Dunstable, Massachusetts, free amateur radio licensing course offered, get your ham radio license in 2022. This was exactly the, uh, the press release. And um, if I go, I think the Groton Herald, I think I have the link to the Groton Herald. It's on their out of town page. Um, but what's interesting is that, see free amateur radio licensing course offered. The problem is you have to subscribe to the newspaper to get anything more than the headline. But Rod, maybe uh, that's something that I don't know if you subscribe to it or not. You don't, okay. So good question. I, you know, they're still in business, so I'm assuming somebody is reading them, but I can't tell you how popular, how popular it is. Uh, Bill? The free one. Thank you for thank you for that. I will endeavor to find out how to how to go about doing that. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure what the response is is to it yet, because when the class starts, I'll ask the people, how did you hear about this? Sure. OK. Um, but uh, I think I sent this to, well, I have some statistics later, how many I sent it to. I think it, those two newspapers were the only two that actually printed the press release. So, and, and I know there's a, there's a local, one of the local papers did stories for us on like the Girl Scouts and blah, 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 and just didn't latch on to the press release for whatever reason. No, this, these are, these are community um, um, announcements, the theory being that the subscribers ha are paying for something. So I'm giving them content for free that they go ahead and charge for. So. Um, and, and the answer is maybe and there's also and again i was going to do this and forgot about it there are things that are synergistic for instance um a lot of times you'll find in like local rod rod and gun clubs okay that there's some synergy there i know one of the club members has been asked to start a radio club uh over at the harvard um the harvard uh sportsman's club uh, to start an amateur radio club over there um and it's jason i think and um and um i know there are some members of the club that belong to the townsend uh sportsman's club so so there is some synergy there here's an interesting here's an interesting site that i'll share with everybody this one blew me away so you can actually go to a Boy Scouts of America site, enter a zip code, and you can put in whether you want Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Venturing Sea Scouts, or STEM Scouts, not even sure what STEM Scouts is, and you can select 10 miles or 20 miles from where you live, okay? So I plopped in 01463, 
And it turns out that within 10 miles of Pepperell, there are 34 Boy Scout troops, okay? And trust me, some of those troops may have five scouts in them, but some of them may have 25 scouts in them. So if you said on average, <clears throat> there's 10 scouts, there is 340 um, um, uh, potential young people. If you can craft the right message, um, you know, backpacking and amateur radio, um, public service and amateur radio. If you can try, if you can, if you can get the right message, you may start to build some synergy. And it's an easy way to reach out. Every one of these guys, most of them, they either have a phone number or they have an email. Some of them have one, some of them have the other, but I also found it's pretty easy to fill in the blanks. In other words, if, if the contact information isn't here, there'll be a link to their website. You go to the website and the contact information is on the website. So um, it's, uh, it's pretty easy. And keep in mind, um, I only collected the Boy Scouts. It turns out, well, I did. I, for, this, for this demo, I'm only telling you that there's 34 troops that are Boy Scout troops. If we expand this to include the Cub Scouts, the number goes up really kind of dramatically. So um, I had more trouble with the Girl Scouts. They don't have a they don't have a page like this. They have an Eastern Mass page, a Western Mass page, and a New Hampshire page. So I got the emails for those three, and I would send messages out. But it's going to take more work to try to track down who the local um, the local uh, um, leaders are for the Girl Scouts. My granddaughter's in the in in one of the Lunenburg uh, uh, Girl Scout troops. When when the time comes, I'll at least gather a, a few names there. The perfect tie or perfect couple, I guess, you know, try to get them into or at least introduce them to M radio. So, so part of the radio merit badge. So there's not only a merit badge, um, there's also something called the Morse code strip. Okay. So, um, and I'm also teaching, teaching Morse code to youth and I've had several, in fact, I had uh, two scouts um, get their Morse code strip and then afterwards get their technician licenses and get right on HF using, using Morse code, which is, which is pretty neat. Um, so there, there is synergy with the scouts. Um, I'll also tell you a story later, uh, maybe, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, uh, sometimes you do these things and you don't, uh, feel like the investment in time is worthwhile. And so when I sent the email out to next door, I got an email back from a, a young man who's in his early 20s who lives in Harvard, who said, I got my technician class license last year and I'm having fun on two meters and I'd really like to get my general class license, you know, and so this was, by the way, on next door that the, the email exchange started. And then he said to me, he says, uh, he says, you know, about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, when I was just in the Boy Scouts, he says, somebody in Harvard came and gave us a, uh, a jamboree on the air presentation and made contacts and all this. And he says, that's what really stirred my interest in amateur radio. Okay. Well, I got very little response out of either the boys or the scout leaders or anything when I did that. I was the guy that that did the jamboree on the air that year. Okay. And so the point is, I should listen to my own advice. This is not a sprint or a one time thing. We have to think of this as a marathon. And as a club, we should make ourselves available to the community to pull people, draw people into amateur radio. Um, and what I'm kicking myself for now is that I did that for one or two years and then stopped 
because nobody was like overly excited about amateur radio. But now I know of at least two of those young guys who went and got ham radio licenses after. Okay, so um, it's important that we do these things, uh, and it's it's too easy to just say ah that wasn't successful. Bill, go ahead. Camps located all over eastern Massachusetts, like Camp Resolute down on Route 62. I guess that's Berlin. We could go to those um, camps and set up a semi-permanent ham station. All you have to do is put a dipole up and put a table there and leave it. And then when they have their meeting, their events there, somebody can show up with a radio, look into the antenna. So were you involved when we did the Boy Scout camp right before COVID hit? I was not. Okay. So we actually had a, uh, we actually went for a weekend to a, uh, uh, a Boy Scout camp out in Gardner. Camp, I can't remember what the name of the camp was. But, um, but it was, uh, I thought it was, it was fairly successful. And the biggest, the most important thing, Bill, is follow up. We've done these presentations a bunch of times, but we never said, if anyone's interested, we're doing a licensed class, right? If you don't follow it up, it, it goes one ear and out the other. And some of these camps specialize in merit badges. Remember one year I went with my grandson to his camp and he earned eight merit badges in one weekend. And we do a merit badge class with, with this station, and we would leave more or less permanently set up at the camp, get kids in and move their merit badge. For the weekend. So the other thing is the schools and finding teachers, science teachers, STEM teachers. And it turns out most schools these days, and I'm talking middle schools and high schools, the entire school staff, okay, is in a school portal so that parents can contact teachers, uh, parents can contact administrators, and you can go in and figure out who's what. And so for instance, Here's the North Middlesex Regional School District. You can select by particular school. So North Middlesex is Pepperell. Uh, it's um, Townsend. Um, no, Groton. Groton's got their own school system. Groton Dunstable is. Uh, and, but by the way, I, I captured the information for Groton Dunstable. They're no different. Okay. Some of the schools will provide uh, phone numbers. All of them will have titles and email addresses. Not all of them. One of the school districts, I was disappointed. Um, to contact a teacher, you have to go through a, like a, you know, a, a portal kind of thing. You can't contact the teacher directly. Um, but I also figured that out on that particular school district. While they didn't give you the email addresses directly, um, I figured out who was doing what, I figured out their email addresses anyway. Um, but you can go here and for each one of these teachers, for instance, um, here, is a, here is a science teacher, right? Seventh grade science teacher. So if we're trying to do, uh, one of the challenges I've always had, how do you find somebody in the schools who might be interested in working on an amateur radio program? And how do you approach those people? Well, you know, you craft a message and you go down the list one at a time. You know, we're looking for somebody to start a STEM program that will help the children, the your students in this way. And here there's money available to get and local community assistance and involvement in doing it. And you go down the list. And I basically captured all the middle school teachers, I didn't focus on high school because I think it's already too old, but maybe I'm wrong, but middle school teachers from uh, Groton Dunstable, um, North Middlesex, I know the uh, Brookline Mason, no, Hollis Brookline schools, all the information for Hollis Brookline is there. Um, and so every administrator, meaning principal, vice principal, or science or STEM, um, uh, teacher, I've got that information captured. My kids would tell me I'm out stalking teachers, and in a way, I am. I never kind of thought of it like that. Anyway, 
Um, emergency management. We have a CERT program in town. Um, I checked all the local communities. Pepperell, I won't say is unique, but the local communities kind of lack CERT programs, but none of the local communities lack an emergency management director. My suspicion is because there's money involved. If a town appoints an emergency management director, they qualify for something. I don't know what, but I find it unbelievable that the island, that the community of Goswald, anybody know what it, where Goswald is? Goswald is Cuddy Hunk Island, okay? Goswald has an emergency management director, and I looked at the name, and the bell went off, and he happens to be the cousin of the guy I'm going to have breakfast with in the morning, somebody I know personally. But anyway, I digress. So uh, if you look at this list, and I know it's pretty small, and I'll see if I can, well, uh, can I zoom this up? I don't know how to do that, do I? Anyway, um, all of the 365 cities and towns in Massachusetts has an emergency management director, and it's public information. They are listed. So I went through, we already knew Dave Kersey here in Pepperell, but I went through, you know, all the other towns in the footprint captured that information. It's in the database. So we yeah, can plus, send plus sign at the top emails of your... to them. We can call them up on the phone. I don't know why we'd call them up on the phone, but we can send emails and try to pitch, um, you know, ham radio involvement in the community, helping with CERT, um, blah, 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 all of these things. So, where does that leave us? That leaves me in a quandary because I can't figure out how to scroll down. Can any, everyone still see this? Yeah. yeah. Use your scroll bar over to your right. Why can't I scroll down? Where did my icons go? Well, I don't need these anymore. There we go. So, what are the results? I got 10 confirmed students for the classes starting a week from Monday. I know of at least six others that have expressed an interest in the class. Thank you. We sent several hundred emails between my email list and the club reflector. Um, we did the next door, the Facebook social media, the ARL final class, six local newspapers. 11 local public safety officials. They're the people, the towns in and around Pepperell. By the way, I should tell you that I avoided the communities in and around Nashua because uh, the Nashua area uh, radio society, I didn't want to step on their feet. And um, while I did do Lunenburg, uh, in the, at least in, the, in my database, um, I know there is some, um, you have the Montachusett Club there. I avoided um, Westford as well, okay? So um, it doesn't include those communities. Um, 35 local middle school science and STEM teachers and administrators, 18 local Boy Scout leaders, 14 local Cub Scout leaders, and lots of other places to look. And like I said, this is ongoing and this database will be available and it'll be something that I hope um, I'll continue to work on and grow and the club can use it hopefully into the future and uh, long after I'm gone. That doesn't sound very good, but you know what I'm trying to say. It'll be a, an available resource. And with that, any questions? Oh, there were... I think there were a bunch of people on the chat, a lot of questions on the chat. Hello. Yeah, yeah Bruce, I have a question. Um, I tried to go to the Facebook page and it says, if you're not logged in, you can't see anything. Any way you can fix that? <laughs> you have to be a Facebook member. Okay, well, that's pretty uh, unwelcoming. Yeah, but that's the way it is. Yeah, um, somebody meant a message to Carlisle Mosquito. 
Is this a, is this a, uh, okay. That was one of your uh, listings there. No. Yeah. It was, it was, yeah, it was on the, uh, it was on the face, uh, on the, uh, uh, Google search page, but I, I know I haven't sent something to the Car Carlisle mosquito. Be pretty small anyway. It's, it's too far out of, too, too far away. They might want blood. 